Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently I received an email from someone who I think is new to photography and new to editing. In their email, they mentioned that when they were taught how to use Lightroom, they were told that if they wanted to convert an image into black and white, all they needed to do was click on the black and white button. But recently they saw a YouTube video and the person in the video said that you should never do that. Instead, you should choose a black and white profile. So in their email, they asked me, which is the right way to convert an image into black and white? Well, in today's video, I'm going to tell you how, and I'm not going to bury the lead. Actually, if you want to convert an image into black and white and you click the black and white button, or if you choose a black and white profile, you're actually doing the same thing. Let me explain. I'm going to begin by working on this image. This is an unedited raw file. And what I'd like to do is show you my workflow so that you know where in my workflow I convert an image to black and white and the way I prefer to do it. Now, what I like to do first is reduce noise if needed. Now, you can see that this was shot with relatively high ISO 2500, but it is a street shot. And typically on my street photography, I don't reduce noise. I leave it the way it is. So I'm not going to change that. The next thing I'll do, if needed, is crop and or straighten the image. Now, I was walking down the street, I saw this scene and something about it amused me. So I quickly pulled my camera up to my face and took this shot. As you can see, it's not framed very well and it's a little bit crooked. So I want to fix that. I'm going to go to the crop tool. I'm going to pull in from the top right to tighten it up quite a bit. And then I'll straighten it just enough here so it looks more normal. And that's that. Now, what amused me about this scene is it's a Thai restaurant with this outdoor seating area. It has like five tables. It has four customers and they're all sitting at their own table. And that amused me. So we have now it kind of framed the way I want it. I didn't have to reduce noise. At this point is where I would convert it to black and white. And that person mentioned that they were taught all they had to do was open up the basic tab and click on the black and white button and bam, you got a black and white image. Well, what you actually did when you clicked on this black and white button is you changed the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Monochrome. That's all you did. And personally, I don't like to do it this way. And I suspect the reason why the person in the video said you shouldn't do it this way is the same reason why I don't like doing this way is because it gives you the least amount of control, meaning you click this. You have this Adobe Monochrome profile. It just converted the tones to black and white, and that's it. Now you just continue with your editing. The advantage, though, is if you choose your own profile, you could choose a profile that is closer to what you actually want. For example, let's take this back to Adobe Color. Let's open up the profile browser. You'll notice there's a lot of different profiles here. Some of these are plugins, like these here are negative lab. Uh, plugins they simply won't have unless you have that plugin. These are profiles I sell, and I'm not doing this video to sell profiles, so I'm not even going to show these. But you have these profiles up here. You may not have camera matching if you're not working on a raw file, so those will be there with raw files. And then down here, you have a lot of profiles that come with Lightroom, and you have 17 different black and white profiles down here. So if you roll this open and scroll down and you just hover over them, you'll notice you'll get a rendition of what that profile would look like. And you can see what this profile looks like. And if I hover over another one, you'll see that it changes. So you can see how the tones change. Now, the whole idea of profiles is that it gives you a starting point. This is where you would start your editing. So the advantage of coming in and using a specific profile is that it will get you somewhere closer to what you want. If you just click that button and you have that Adobe Monochrome profile, it may be a hundred miles away from what you actually want. And you're going to have to do a lot of editing then to get it to look the way you want it to look. For example, Let's say I like this one with the tablecloths very, very white, but someone else might like this one with less contrast where the tablecloths are more gray. Or this one, let's say, where her top is darker compared to some of the others. See this one, like her top's real dark. Someone may prefer that. So you could come in and pick your profile. So what I'll do is I'll pick a profile, and I kind of like this one, so I'll click on it. 
Also, when you choose a profile like this, often, not always, but often you'll have an amount slider. Now, again, if I instead went up here and I just did the Adobe, where is it? Right here, monochrome profile here. This amount slider is grayed out, so it's not available. That's, again, if I'm confusing you, as though I click this black and white button. And notice that slider is grayed out. So that's a disadvantage, too, by just using that profile compared to down here. If I choose one of these, I don't remember which one I chose, but let's say it's that one. All right. I have the amount slider, so I could subtly change the tones, or in this case, maybe more than subtly. So I could move this around to kind of dial it in a little more closer to what I want. So that's another advantage. So I could come in and do that. Then once I'm satisfied with this, I'll close this up. Then I'll do tone edits right here. So these six sliders, and in this case here, I'm just going to open up shadows a little more. It's down a little bit. I get a white point. The way I like to do it is hold the Option Cam and Mac. It's all the Canon PC. Click on the whites slider. I've been almost entirely black screen. Move this to the right. I see some white come through. That means I'm blowing out the highlights in those areas. I typically don't like to blow out the highlights at all. So I'll try to bat that off till most, if not all of it, dissipates. Same thing for the blacks. Hold in the alt option key, click on the black slider. Now I have an almost entirely white screen. With this to the left, you'll see some black come through. That means I'm crushing the shadows in those areas. I have the absolute black there. I don't want to do it that much. I don't mind crushing the shadows a little. So then I'll do that. Then the next thing in my workflow, what I'll do for a black and white image is go to the black and white mix. Roll this open. You'll see you have a number of different color sliders. These color sliders represents color, represent colors that were in the color image. For example, we know in the color image that these bricks were red. So I could go to the red slider, move it to the right to make the, anything that was red in the color image brighter in the black and white image or darker. So you could come in and further kind of tweak your profile. Now, the again, the advantage of choosing a profile is that hopefully will make you or help you not have to do as much adjusting here. If I just chose the Adobe monochrome profile, I probably would have to come in here and move these quite a bit. Now I do want to caution you on something. Let me reset this and let's go back up to the profile browser itself. And instead of choosing one of the black and white profiles that come with Lightroom, instead, let me go up here and choose a camera matching profile. Now again, these will vary depending on your camera. Uh, for this Fujifilm X-T1, you can see there's a number of different profiles and it has four different black and white profiles. And let's say I like this one. If I click on this, you'll notice that the amount slider isn't available. Furthermore, if I close this up, I notice that it doesn't say black and white mix anymore. It says color mixer. And if I roll it open, it says monochrome profile applied. So I don't have those adjustments. So the amount of um, like adjusting you could do will really vary from profile to profile. Like for some profiles, the amount slider won't be available. For others, it will. For some profiles, you'll have a black and white mix. For others, you won't. So personally, I tend to not uh, use like camera profiles if possible. I try to use one of the profiles that I made or one of the profiles that come with Lightroom. That way I could come in and, you know, have an amount slider and or come down here and have a black and white mix section so that I could do some adjusting here. So that's the way I uh, prefer to do it. Let's go to another image just so I could kind of just show you my workflow a little better. I have this one. Um, I don't need to reduce noise. It is a little crooked and I didn't really, I like it tighter. So I'm going to go to the crop tool and I'm going to tap the X key to sh go to a vertical crop and I'm going to tighten it up quite a bit. What I want to do is I want to frame the lady with the trees like a little bit like that. It's a little bit crooked. All right. Now, at this point, I would go and ch convert it to black and white. So we'll go to the black and white browser. Again, I'm going to use one of these uh, profiles that come with Lightroom. I kind of like that one. That kind of looks... Let's say that one. And then I could go to the amount slider and tweak it as I see fit. And then I'll close that up. I'll go to my tone adjustments. These are these six sliders, although I don't often need to move exposure and contrast. So we'll bring 
I highlight it down a little bit, open up the shadows a little bit. I'll get a white and black point. Sometimes you don't even have to come in and move these sliders at all. If the profile was really close, you might not have to do this at all. You may not even have to do the black and white mix. It really depends. Now you notice when there's people involved, uh, the red, orange, and yellow will affect their skin tone a lot. You come in and change things around here. And you just, what I do is I just come in and move the sliders, see how they work. Then what I'll do at this point, once I'm done doing all those tone adjustments with the profile itself and with the, the actual tone adjustments in the basic tab and the black and white mix, then I would do masking if I need to do it. On this one, I don't need to do it. So I would just jump down to effects and you put on a darker vignette. But let me show you something with masking uh, so you know how I do it in my workflow. I have this image here. Obviously, I took this shot because she has circles on her pants and we have this kind of grid here with these circles and I just kind of like that look. So I took this photo. Again, it's an unedited raw file. ISO 200, don't have to worry about reducing noise. I don't need to crop it or straighten it. I like it the way it is. So I'm immediately then going to go to the basic tab, click on the profile browser. What I want to do is I want to find a profile that makes the circles stand out in her pants as much as possible. So I'm just going to quickly hover over each of these until I see something I like. And none of them are really that. Well, this one looks pretty good right here. So we'll click on that one. So I like that one. Then I'll go to the amount slider. I'll move this about. You can see it's not doing a lot because there's not a lot of color in the color shot. So it won't affect it that much. Then I'll go to the tone sliders and I'll, I think I'll open up highlights more. Bring shadows down a little bit. I'll get a white point and a black point. Something like that. Now I want to go to the black and white mix. And again, I just move these around. Now, there's not a lot of color in the shot to begin with, so these won't be affecting the image that much overall. So you can see there, most of them aren't doing anything or very any, barely anything. That one made her, uh, the circles on her pants, a little more prominent. That one too. All right, now at this point, let's do some masking. What I want to do here is I want to bring out the grid a little more. So let's go to masking. And we're going to do an objects mask. And I'll use a brush tool for this. And what I'll do is I'll try to do it, I think, in two parts, probably. So I'm going to do this part of the grid over in here. Like here and here. And then we'll get this middle part. Like that. Let's like that. Let's like part of this. So let's add to it. So we'll click Add. And we'll add with a brush. And we'll get the rest of it over in here. And just do it real quick. Of course, you want to do a much more careful job than I am. So I have that. Now, what I want to do here is I want to go to detail. And we'll add some sharpness. And we'll go to effects. And I want to add some texture and some clarity just to bring those out way more. So we really are showing the circles against the circles uh, in there. And then we'll just finish this image off with a darker vignette maybe like that and that's that so that's what i'll do so that's pretty much my workflow you could see there's not if you could choose the right profile you won't have a lot of post-production work to do after you do the profile because again the profile is meant to be the starting point but if you could find a profile that gets you really close to where you want to be you don't have to do as much editing from that point forward. So that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.